Well, it's time for another video. And uh, sorry if you can hear the noise of the truck running and all that. It's hot. And I had to turn the air conditioner on. See, I used to be able to park up there on the top of the hill in the driveway. But then that hurricane we had last year, there's a tree that goes over the driveway. And it pushed the tree down to where my trailer won't fit underneath it. So now I gotta park out here by the road where it's hot. It's hot. There's no no wind down here. I don't know why I said that, but I'm just letting you know. So today we're not gonna be too much in the Bible. Uh, I got a couple pass I got a couple verses I'm gonna read. But the Bible don't really talk about what I'm gonna talk about today. But I still think it's important. And uh, there's examples of this in the Bible. I probably could have, like, go found you some of them. But for the most part, I got, like, two verses here at the end. Wherever that is. But uh, I want to talk about what it's like to be an introvert and a Christian. Because Christianity and introversion uh, seems to be not compatible and I'm pretty introverted pretty pretty introverted and uh, a lot of people if you're watching this and you're introverted and a Christian too you're probably thinking the same thing like how did the, how did the two go together because Christianity you know we're required to be a witness, you know, to tell people the gospel, right? And that means strangers, people you don't know. Introverts are not comfortable talking to people they don't know. We don't want to talk to people at all. If I don't know you, I don't want to talk to you. And that seems to run contradictory to Christianity. Because we're supposed to be out there proclaiming the gospel to people and so on and so forth. And if, I guess if, if you're an extrovert, you have no problem with that because you like talking to strangers and meeting new people. If you're an introvert, you don't. But another thing that seems to run contrary, introverts do not like small talk. We hate it. We don't like it. We'd much rather talk about something, substance. Uh, you know, talk about stuff we have in common, stuff we're interested in. We don't want this. Oh, hey, how are you doing? How everything? How are you? How's work? We don't. We don't like that mess. But if you go to church, when you're at your you know, church service on Sunday morning and whatnot, that's what you got to deal with. Small talk is part of the game. And that's fine. And uh, we'll get to the whole point of this later. While I'm talking about these things I don't like, or we don't like as introverts. But the basis of a church service is just when you have that, set, that part of the service where you uh, shake each other's hand, welcome your visitors. That's that, I, and I, you know, I've been in, in, in introvert Christian groups. I mean, on Facebook, which is just one, and they kind of whine a lot. But a lot of them talk about how hard it is when it comes to the whole handshaking part of the service, because we don't like talking to people and touching strangers and all that. So that's the, one of the hardest parts of the service. But the thing is. You know, introverts, they got that going for them. And you look at an extrovert and you say, oh, it must be so much easier for them. It ain't. It shouldn't be anyway. Because just like we have the whole problem of we don't like talking, we don't like talking to people, we'd rather be alone. Sometimes God requires us to push that nonsense aside and do what needs to be done. And introverts, same way. They like to talk, 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 talk. And all that. 
not often you see a truck going backward down the road. Well, they like to talk and talk, and there's times when extroverts they got to shut their mouth. They gotta they gotta tone it down and get done what needs to be done, whatever that may be. But uh, extroverts might have trouble sitting in one spot for a long time. I know I have a friend on Facebook. I'm pretty sure his head would explode if he had to stay at the house for any length of time. He can't stand to stay at the house. He always has to be out doing something. And that's fine if that's his thing. I'm not knocking it. But for an extrovert to sit still for a long period of time and just get in the Word or pray and stuff like that, that's probably kind of difficult for them. You know, if they're the kind of person that always wants to be on the go, talking to people, so on and so forth. But for an introvert, for me to stay at the house and just dig into the Bible or some other book, spend time in prayer, I'm all about that. I get to be alone. It's going to be peace and quiet. All my favorite things. But, uh, if you're like me, you've always seen pastors and preachers in general as they must be extroverts. They must be. Because the way they get up there and they like talking to people after service, they have to go visit people in the hospital and all this stuff. And one of the ideas I got from watching my pastor that I used to have when I was a kid was that pastors are salesmen. Preachers in general are salesmen. Oh, they're good at that. You know, I'm not saying that's what they are. I'm just saying generally they're good at selling things or they're a salesman in their regular job because my pastor now is a salesman. My old pastor was a pretty good salesman. And my boss that I had, he retired a couple of years ago, but the boss I had at this job when I first started was a minister. He wasn't a pastor, but he was a you know, preacher and he was a good salesman. He was very extroverted. So I've always looked at pastors as they must be extroverts. But whenever God was, you know, calling me to preach a year or so ago, before I finally, you know, figured out what he wanted, I was researching it because I was like, Lord, surely you don't want me, the biggest introvert in the world, to preach because I'd be terrible at it, you know? And I got to looking into it, and it's not unlikely for introverts to you know preach and stuff like that i read several blogs about it i actually got a quote on my phone i don't know if i'll be able to find it but it was a pretty good one but an introvert might not be good at selling things or talking you know maybe extroverts ain't got no problem telling you what's on their mind but what an introvert can do that an extrovert probably has a hard time doing. We can listen. We're really good at that. Really good at listening. Most of the people I work with, the people that are back at the shop right now, I know their name. I know, you know, their job. I know what they drive. Sometimes I might know how many kids they got. And they have never spoken a word to me. I've never spoken a word to them. They probably don't know me from Adam, but I listen and I listen to them talking to other people. And you know, you learn a lot about a person just by listening. You know, what's that saying? God gave you two ears and one mouth so you can listen twice as much as you talk. And that's how I get to know people when I start a new job. Yeah, I start a new job, it might be a month or two before I start talking to people, but I'm listening to see how I should approach them. The thing is, though, about being an introvert, when it comes down to, oh, well, you just, all you just did was tell me all the things you don't like about church and all this. Listen, the one group I'm in, the Christian introvert group I'm in, all they seem to do is complain about church. I've quit going to church because of this, and I've quit going to church. Listen, you might be introverted. And there's probably people more introverted than me out there. But when it comes to 
the, you know what Hebrew says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves. That means, yes, there might be times at church you're uncomfortable, and there might be things there that make you, you know, but suck it up. Suck it up. That's one of the things I want to tell people in that introvert group I'm in. Well, I just, I was the lady at church just made me feel so, who cares? Who cares? Suck it up. Hey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get off like that. But the thing is, I'm an introvert. I don't have a problem with it, you know. I used to not like it. But, you know, I guess I'm getting older now. We just had a birthday the other day. And, uh... And, like, you know, I'm really skinny, too. And I just put these two in the same basket. And I used to hate that. Oh, I wish I could gain some weight. I'm so skinny. And same thing with being an introvert. But you know what now? Whatever. This is how I am. This is how God made me. Ain't nothing I can do about it. I'm skinny. I'm an introvert. If you don't like it, oh well. So, uh, but what I was saying, the thing is, yeah, I'm an introvert. I'm cool with it. And, but you know what I love more than anything else? God. I love God. And, I love Mountain Dew too, but uh, like Sunday morning, well not just Sunday morning, but a lot of times on Sunday morning, you know, we open up the church service with prayer and my pastor will call on me. And uh, sometimes, and it always, you know, it always gets my heart pumping real hard when I, because I'm like, oh, please don't mess up, please don't mess up. But there's two, two, three weeks ago, I got, I swear I had an anxiety attack after I did it. But you know what? I love praying in church like that. I feel like it's an honor that I get to, you know, pray to open up the church service. So, you know, people be, why would you want to do that if it, you know, makes your heart beat out of control and almost gives you an Because I like it. I, I love doing things for God more than I love, you know, be an introvert or I don't I just don't let that th those things bother me because it's more important to me to do what God wants me to do and like when I preach I preached Sunday last Sunday night and the whole time we're singing congregational songs and then after that we're taking testimonies and part of me I can't wait to get up there and preach because it's been like eight, nine months since I preached. And I've been about to bust. I want to get up there and preach so bad. But the other part of me, I'm like, okay, I hope somebody else gets up and gives a testimony. So that'll buy me some more time for a kid. Because I'm scared. I'm terrified of talking in front of people. But at the same time, I love preaching. So, I don't know. Wrap your head around that one. But I think being an introvert... People look at it as, oh, I don't understand how God expects me to be a good Christian and he made me an introvert. I think he made you an introvert for a reason. I think God has a purpose for all of us. If you're a believing in Jesus Christ, if you're saved, he has, he has a purpose for you. And that personality trait, whether you're an introvert, uh, ambivert, or an extrovert, it's going to work with the abilities he gave you you know they're going to work together in conjunction to accomplish the goal he has for you to do uh jeremiah 1 5 you know this one before i formed thee in the belly i knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb i sanctified thee and i ordained thee a prophet unto the nations so if you are an introvert god made you an introvert before you were even born he had already planned it out he's like i I can give them these talents and uh, this personality and they're going to work perfectly together to accomplish the goal I have in mind. So yeah, as introverts in the church, we probably feel inadequate sometimes. Like, oh, that person's so good at such and such. I'll never be like that. And no, you won't because that's not how God made you. 
but it's not that's not God's purpose. Matthew sixteen twenty four. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Y'all know that verse, but that's what I close my videos out with. We're called as Christians. We're all called to do the same thing. Not, you know, as far as your individual, you know, purpose God has for you. That's between you and God. But for the most part, Christians are all called to do the same thing. Serve others and be a witness to the gospel. Sometimes, like the Bible just said, deny yourself. So in those situations where an extrovert feels like they want it, and it might be not time for them to do that, it might be time for them to hush and listen. They have to deny their self, deny their extroversion. Same way for introverts. When we get to the part where we just want to crawl under a rock and hide, and we don't want to have nothing to do with nobody. I don't want to go to church because they make me feel so uncomfortable. Deny yourself. You're part of the body. You, sometimes what you want to do, you got to throw that aside and just worry about being part of the bigger picture, the body of Christ. Deny your introversion sometimes. I mean, not all the time. But when the situation calls for it, you got to deny yourself and sometimes that it means taking your little your little fears as an introvert and I have them so don't you know I know what it is but sometimes you just got to step on it and be like okay this is scary and I don't want to do it but I'm gonna do it anyway because that's what God wants me to do okay so I should have done that video a long time ago so now y'all know I'm terribly introverted. Which is part of the reason I make videos. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm not too good. I'm not saying that I make videos not so I ain't got to give the gospel out to people on a person-to-person -person basis. But I'm like, you know, I'm not that good at it. Maybe I'll make videos and that'll help me get good at it. But, uh, and it'll, maybe it'll help me preach better too. You know, I think it, I think it does help. I think my sermon I did Sunday night was probably a little bit better than the first one I did though it was a little bit short but uh I think making videos has helped me there but uh yeah if you're an introvert and you know sometimes the things at church you don't want to do they make you uncomfortable too bad too bad sometimes you gotta squash it and do what you need to do so I hope that video was a help. Remember the Bible giveaway is going on. Go like the Facebook page and then like the post with the video, the giveaway video in it. And you'll be entered to win the uh, Church Bible Publisher Schofield. And don't forget to listen to the podcast. You can get it on iTunes and Spreaker. New episodes on Friday, usually. I plan on having one this Friday. But, uh, and you can email me any questions any comments prayer requests encouraging words ideas for shows or if you just want to be a curmudgeon you can do that too at gospelergimmicks at gmail.com till next time take up your cross carry on <laughs>